Uh, yeah. Thanks. All right. So the Kickstarter for Fennec is live. It is a, a gritty tokusatsu story, 18 plus. If you like kaiju, uh, henshin heroes, especially those two fighting, then check out the link in our bio for Fennec. Uh, the Kickstarter is live. And we're here today with uh, the editor of Global Frequency Comics, uh, Kim Cassidy. Hey, hey. Hi. So, uh, thanks for coming. So, uh, we met you at IC3, that's uh, uh, which was the Indie Comics uh, Creator Con. That was super awesome. Um, and we were just on your podcast a second ago, so keep an eye out for that. Yeah. But um, so we'll start off with uh, Global Frequency, which sounds like a uh, a news channel on RoboCop. What is that? <laughs> um, so Global Frequency Studios is our company. My husband, Aaron Neff, and I um, run it together. And it is our comic book company. So we publish our own books. So far, we have um, a few books from Mavericks, which is his main IP, which is a mecha robot military action comic book. Um, we also have Judex, which is like a pulp noir black and white um, book set in 1940s occupied Paris. And we also have some other books that are coming out like we're co-producing um, a book called Shift, which will be coming out soon. And then another book called Jadi which we'll get into later. <laughs> Ooh, I definitely got to check out Mavericks. Uh, super awesome book. Holy crap. The art is at first I had to right. read the, I had to read the art before I read the book. It was so good, but uh, you definitely got my attention. I'll be focusing on future books for sure. Yeah. Hector's amazing. We're really, really lucky to be working with him um, on Operation Vesuvius. Uh, as an editor, uh, what would you like to let other writers and artists know? Oh, that's a good one. Um, read your dialogue out loud. I would say that is my number one tip, like off the top of my head. Um, dialogue, especially in comics, is really important because while you're, as a writer in your script, you're putting everything into your storytelling, right? To set everything up and to talk to your artist, to set up what the book is going to look like and what it feels like. But as the reader, the only writing that they get because everything else is very visual um, is the dialogue. And it's so easy to hear something one way in your head and um, have it, have you think that it's gonna come out a certain way. Having someone read it out loud and hearing other people read your words really helps you to decide if your dialogue sounds natural, um, if your characters have different definitive voices or if you closed your eyes and listened to someone else reading it does it just sound like the same person is talking? Um, that's what I would say is my number one tip for a writer in comics is to have someone read your dialogue out loud for you. Uh, yeah, I think that's really good advice. Some people will just uh, let a lot of words take up the page, a lot of fluff, or they write like Stan Lee or something. And, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. It's also, we have a tendency when we're writing to not use contractions, but when we speak, we always use contractions. We don't usually say, I am going to the store. So that, no, I'm going to go to the store. You know, it's a, we have a more informal um, way of speaking that just comes out naturally. And obviously there are times when um, it you wouldn't speak like that, depending on what setting or what's happening. But um, I find a lot of times we tend to write out all of those words, like how we would expect them to be written and not how someone would naturally speak them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really good point. Um, so I notice, uh, you guys are constantly busy. You're constantly working with like, like high level talented artists, like for sure. Um, so, and, and you've already heard my, my thoughts on this a little bit on, on your podcast, but what, have you noticed a shift in, in trends and genres in, in the comic world as you're tabling? And do you, how do you see comics surviving? Um, yeah, uh, Neff and I have talked a lot we call it the year of the robot. Because if you look out in indie and also kind of more mainstream between um, Transformers, Dawn Runner just came out with a lot of, of mecha and robot sci-fi books as well. Um, I found that, well, yes, you're always going to have your superhero 
um, stories, they're not really going anywhere, right? They'll always be a Marvel, they'll always be a DC, they'll keep telling Spider-Man and Batman and X-Men. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think in order for comics to survive and for them to grow, we have to tell other stories too. And I think that um, you're starting to see that more. There's that awesome um, crossover at Image between um, the one hand and the six fingers with Dan Waters and um, Ram V telling this awesome like crime noir um, crossover between two different books. Um, I think you'll see a little more special event kind of stuff like that happening, um, or at least I hope that we'll see um, more of that happening. Um, I also think we need to tell different kinds of stories. Like I'm excited for all of the sci-fi stuff that I've seen coming out. And I hope that's, that stories like that continue to be told. All right, sweet. Um, can you uh, give a shout out to a, a project you're working on and tell people where they can find it? Um, uh, perpetually, we will be working on Mavericks. Uh, that's M-A-V-R-I-C-S. Uh, you can find it at mavericks.com. Um, you can also go to the globalfrequency.org, which is under construction, but it'll reroute you there if you click on the link. Sweet. Well, uh, thanks for coming on and, and, and being a part of this interview. Thank you for having me. All right. Later. <laughs>